Hello, everybody. My name is Yer Yarek Buchholz, and today we have a Mr. Mark Musso, award-winning speaker, trainer. Uh, you know, I would lo love to talk about yourself and, you know, tell what you have achieved, how many years you've been in the real estate, but why what? I just give you uh, all the pleasure to introduce yourself. How does it sound? That sounds good, Yarek. No problem. Ah, well, uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Marc Mousseau. I'm the Frenchman of this uh, this uh, real estate club with Yarek, which is Polish. Uh, but uh, I want to say good good evening, everybody. Um, like uh, Yarek is saying, uh, I have been in real estate for now uh, 31 years or so. I got into real estate by pure bad luck, where actually uh, I bought a house in the property in a project that went bankrupt. And uh, by this uh, happening, uh, I found myself losing uh, my deposit, which was at that time nothing, 1700 bucks. Uh, but I, I decided that you know I wasn't going to cry over a wolf and cry and cry and cry. I just decided that uh, I was going to do something about it. And uh, basically went to the trustee and offered to buy my, my house. And um, the trustee said, no. I said, why? He says, well, we're selling the whole project. We're not only selling your house, we need to sell everything in one shot to pay the creditors. And I said, okay, well, how about if I buy the whole project? And the guy says, well, make me an offer. And uh, that's basically how I got into real estate. I turned around, made an offer to the trustee uh, for 10 cents on the dollar. So that was like uh, uh, $250,000. Uh, and it was about two and a half million dollars worth of real estate, including land, uh, house that were partially built somewhere. I mean, actually two people were already living in their house. But um, so that's how I got into real estate uh, 30 years ago. I've done about everything there is to be done in real estate, meaning um, uh, buy, fix, and sell, buy and hold. Uh, I did some condo conversion, some syndication, some land development uh, nationally, internationally. And the biggest project I worked on was in Costa Rica with my business partner, Jean Lebeau, which some of you know. Um, I'm still involved in Canada and in the States. I mostly do bigger stuff. Uh, I'm, I don't run after deals. Uh, I find deals when they come, and uh, by then I just do what I need to do. So um, uh, a lot of experience. I've also trained for Rich Dad. Um, I train about 35,000 students over a period of 10 years uh, with Russ with me and Rich Dad. And I was originally the first trainer in Canada with Ross Lytle. Ross and I came together. Uh, there was no other trainer. Shelly wasn't there yet and everything. And um, I've got a very strong business background also. And uh, we actually took uh, what was at that time uh, Russ Whitney, a Whitney Education Group, Whitney Information Group, and uh, then became Ty Grant and so on, and uh, built all their training programs, modules. Um, uh, you know, I took some of my students that did very, very well and uh, trained them to become trainer. And the best example to all of this is Jean Lebeau. Uh, Jean was one of my students uh, on my first camp, first event ever. Uh, Jean was what we called speaker left, the first row, first student uh, with his son. Uh, and, you know, I've trained, I think there's only three or four trainers that are, that is still with um, Rich Dad that I have not trained because, I mean, I've left the Rich Dad about three and a half years ago. So I've got a lot of experience. I'm, I'm here for you guys. Um, uh, Yarek and myself are, are really looking at um, uh, getting to the point where we're going to work with investors to get you guys to be more and more and more knowledgeable and for you guys to be able to do real estate. So, I, you know, I wrote three books. Uh, I don't know what else to say. That's basically it. <laughs> else that sure. I mean, I could, I, I could talk for the next hour if you want. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, you know, this, uh, we can schedule some uh, kind of uh, encouragement presentation and talk about, you know, your achievements, etc. And you know, I, I truly believe that if you are dedicated towards, you know, achieving your goals, doesn't matter what kind of business you are in, then you will, you will get there, right? So persistence, 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 and good network yeah. people. Yep. Yeah, yeah and, so. And, you know, the key to, key to success in real estate is actually um, being able, I guess, to stay focused and, and just not quit. I mean, this is not an easy game. You know, people that, there's so many gurus out there that say, oh, you know, Oh, you gotta make a flip. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. It's you know, it's easy. And you look at all those TV shows, which are total bullshit. Sorry for saying it that way. But I mean, those TV shows. You know, they, oh, you could flip a house. You make thirty thousand. You make twenty thousand. That is so BS. This is like, um, you know, if they're making a show, 
uh, you bet that they have the contractors, the plans, the offer to purchase. Everybody's ready. They they know exactly what the challenges were, and they filmed it. It took you know three weeks to do a thirty minute show. Uh, so I, I really, really um, uh, <laughs> these shows are just bug me to crazy anyway. Because so if you're going to do any TV shows, possibly possibly in the future, you're going to be straight to the point, right? <laughs> Well, it, you know, we talked about that this afternoon, and I've been uh, when I was with Rich Dad, I, I proposed that to them. So they said, "Why don't we do a real Renault show?" And you know, the idea was to rent a uh, construction trailer and actually put it on site, and starting on Friday. But you know, like, you know, if the students want to learn something, you still have to have a bit of stuff ready. You know, you need to to have lined up. 15, 20 trades. You need to have seen the plans in advance. So you know your kitchen side. You know you, you just can't go out and say, well, I'm ordering some kitchen Saturday morning at 10, and at 2.30 in the afternoon, the the kitchen cabinets come in, and, and the granite countertop is already cut. I mean, this is, this is like, <laughs> anyway, I mean. Just... Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, don't oh. get me started here. <laughs> I got the message. Okay, so the way how that works, guys, is very, very simple. This is only for VIP members uh, uh, workshop where you can ask any question related to real estate, uh, sophisticated investors, mentors, partners of Canada REIC. And the way how we are working is you can raise your hand and we will be happy to, to, to unmute you. Otherwise, you can type it in, in the questions table, special mark on the right side of your uh, control panel, or I will read some questions which we have received through the, our system for the people which they cannot participate. However, they would like to ask Mr. Mark any, uh, any questions. The way how we are doing is we are recording those presentations and they are available for any VIP member to review it, uh, watch, uh, listen, uh, and then even ask the questions later on. So we are all about helping you guys as long you will ask to be helped. Okay, so the way how I see it is uh, if there is anybody has a questions, I know Mr. Gary, he has a deal happening at this moment and out of curiosity I would like to have an opportunity to, to, to unmute Mr. Gary. Hello Mr. Gary. Mr. Gary, I know you have a mic. Yes, I do. <laughs> Hello. So how is your deal happening? Yes, we can. Yeah, we it can. Is, um, hi, Mark. How are you? No, always good. Always good. Good. <laughs> good. I saw you uh, on uh, when, when you were in Saskatoon. I saw your, uh, your uh, I guess, your client that was, was standing behind you telling, you telling everybody on your ex school how good of a job you were doing. Oh, thank you, thank you. I mean, uh, are you talking like in, when I was there in January or? Yes. Yep. Well, uh, you know, it's um, you know what what's funny is that these students of mine had been with a coaching company before. They spent close to a hundred thousand uh, dollars in coaching and training, and they weren't moving along at all. And I don't, uh, I don't have time to waste time, and. You know, I got them to do things that were just basic stuff that that got them out, and within within about a month, a month and a half or so, they found deals like you know, like they wrote offers which they hadn't done. Like, listen, they'd been, they'd been in coaching for a year and they hadn't written an offer. So you you sort of say, hmm, who's at fault, the coach or the student? Well, there's a point where I say the coach is at fault. And uh, so when I came with them, we went out, we we actually found some some amazing property they're still working on it one of them is tied up uh, and it's a uh, if you if you knew the property you'd say uh, this is too good to be true and they're they're working hard but they now got past their fears I would say well thanks for the comment there yes well I also um, we started with the Canada REIC uh, um, seminars here every every month in Saskatoon and she came out to one of the first ones we had so I got uh, I got a chance to talk to her as well Good, 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 good. She's she's a pretty awesome lady. Very simple person, but but hardworking, and and they just follow what I tell them to do. If I say you need to write five offers this week, they don't stop until they got their five offers, and that's what I like. That's for sure. 
Yeah, well, so I'm where, just going where to. Can we help you? Where can we help you? You've got a deal going, and can you give me a bit of detail so I can help you on it? Or I do. To... I don't know if I need any help at the moment, but I always okay. like to have uh, uh, okay. as much input as possible. I uh, sure. I got well last winter. I worked down in Phoenix most of the winter. I, I got quite a few contacts, and of course, you know, we talk about networking being the most important thing of all. Mm -hmm. And um, through one of these uh, LinkedIn contacts, I, I kept in touch with one of the uh, a wholesaler type of a person who works out of Atlanta. Okay. And uh, this spring, he brought me, about a month and a half ago now, brought me a property in Charlotte that really looked interesting. It was a wholesale, wholesale deal. And um, it's 65 units. So, oh, nice, so we're nice working deal. very diligently now. We put the, uh, I think we got most of the financing together at least mm -hmm. the bridge financing, and um, uh, the appraisal should be done on it today. So if the appraisal comes in good enough, well then we're we're set to go. Yeah. yeah. And so you wanna you wanna run a few numbers with me and and something like that, or what do you want? What do we like to do on it? Why won't you do that, Gary? I was I was not expecting to talk here tonight. I was going to listen to you. Oh well, I mean <laughs> realistically, if if uh, you know the. Uh, sorry, my I got I got a little puppy here that seems to want to play. <laughs> yeah, she is. And uh, but you know the the idea here is that uh, not necessarily wanting to help you, uh, but if you uh, if you want to give me some details on the property, I might have you think of things. Uh, I don't know. There's pools, parking. Uh, uh, are you going to condominize this? What's the highest and best use? Uh, is there a way to flip it? Uh, you know, uh, what else could we do with it? Um, and those kind of things. So if you give me a bit of detail, maybe I could help you. Are you at the due diligence point right now? Uh, well, we have um, we haven't physically been on site yet. I've, um, the price, the price, by the way, for the 65 units was uh, 2 point, they were asking $2.4 million. Mm -hmm. And, um, but they wanted to sell very quickly. They, they, uh, they had had a couple of offers on it that were kind of like 90 days out and they didn't like that length of time. So I was working with um, a, a young lady that has got me doing some condominium uh, changes in Washington, D.C., but she also uh, has a really good feel for um, being able to get, get uh, not only bridge financing but regular financing and 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 she's done a, a wonderful job of making sure that she's got lots of connections in that area okay so when i first looked into this property i didn't i thought it was going to be way too much over my head to be thinking about it um, but after talking to anika we sat down and kind of put a plan together and uh, and said well why don't we why don't we see what we can do as far as bridge financing so uh, bottom line is um, I have it under contract for $2.2 .2 million. Okay. And um, the the um, seller does not want to have anything to do with with you know holding any any of the financing or anything. So they okay. it, it's a family owned business. They just want to get out of it. Okay. Um, and the, so it's worth it's worth 2.2. .2, you're getting it at two. Uh, what's the real market value of it? Okay, I, I'm getting it at 2.2 .2 million. The, we had a broker, they call it a BPO, Broker Professional Opinion, done on it, at, and it came in at 2,750,000. Okay. And the uh, appraisal is taking place today and tomorrow, so we'll we'll know what an official appraisal comes in at after tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you'll, you'll get the official appraisal. So you've got a, a tentative appraisal at 2.7. You're yep. picking it up for 2.2, um, yep. and and you, it's a cash deal basically. You've got to come up with all the financing, 100 percent. Right. Closing day, closing 30 days. Closing actually, we're hoping to close by the end of the month. Yeah. Okay, and what have you done so far in due diligence? Well, we've um, we've had um, um, an inspector just kind of give it the once over as far as the property and where it is, where it's located and uh, and the exterior, I guess, uh, state of the property because it's uh, it's it's more like a, a I guess a townhouse project. It's yep. 11, 11 buildings that sit on four acres and they're 
six and six and seven units per building. Some of them are um, four bedroom. They're four bedroom, three bedroom, two bedroom, and one bedroom. So there's yeah. Did you post uh, that? Right. Did you post that on Canada REIC for looking for partners? That that deal sounds familiar. I've seen that deal somewhere. Is that you did? Okay, I did, so I yes. saw the, I saw the property. Okay. Uh, yeah. So so listen, my job here tonight is what I what I look at my job is I'm actually going to try to convince you not to buy. Okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the reason I say this is that if I was just there, yeah, you're doing great, you're doing this, you're doing this, good, 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 you'd be buying. The, the name of the game here is for you to be convinced so good that this is a great deal yeah. that you have to convince me. Okay? So okay. because what happens is that we, we get emotionally involved. We agree. We, we say, okay, I got this, you know. 16 a few units, 2.2 million, it's worth 2.5, maybe 2.7. And I sent a guy quickly and he made a quick uh, inspection around it. Uh, they want me to close in 30 days. Uh, they don't want to hold anything. Um, you know, the deals that they had before fell true. Um, and they want to be paid like now. So me, these are all ringing bells of, okay, something, and I, I'm telling you this because I don't want you to buy it. I want you to buy it, but I want you to be damn sure you're buying the right thing, if you understand what I'm saying. So Absolutely. my first thing, it's worth, they say it's worth 2.7, that's an appraisal. Is that appraisal independent of the vendor, or it's the vendor that asked for it? No, it was uh, myself and um, Anika, the, uh, the people who are doing the financing, asked for a VPO before we went any farther. So uh, that was an independent one that, uh, that we ordered from Okay, so so you're sure this is totally, there's no, um, uh, you're sure that the appraiser is working on the behalf of the lender and you, is that correct? The, the appraiser is working on our behalf, yes. The, the, okay, uh, so, okay, the appraiser so. is working for, actually for the, um, um, the, the lender. Yeah, the guy that's going to supply the uh, bridge financing. Okay, so so at least you're, uh, and this, I'm, I'm coaching everybody that's there on the line. This is important. When when somebody gives you, uh, says, you know, well, we're going to get an appraisal, watch who you get the appraisal from. Because, yep. you know, if it had been the vendor, it's worth nothing. If it's <laughs> anybody that's connected with the vendor, it's worth a bit less than nothing. Um, when, it's, uh, when it's financing, most of the time, when the financing company is asking for it, most of the time it's, it's it's value, it's it's at value. Okay, so you got to sort of trust it. Now there's another challenge also is that don't forget in the states, the banks for a while were telling their appraiser to come low on financing. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they they say you know instead of coming at 2.7, they might say come in at two. You know we know it's worth about 2.5, 2.7. So why don't you come in at 2.5? Because we're gonna lend on 2.5, not 2.7. Okay, so just beware that, uh, especially in the states. In Canada, it's not as bad, but in the states, the some bank, some financial institution, will talk to their appraiser and say, "Come low," because we want to be secured on our loan. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, buyer beware. Appraisals in the states that would and, and I'll, I'll here's here's what I, I had some properties in the states. The appraiser came to me and said, you know what? I think this is worth a hundred thousand, but the bank wants me to appraise it at fifty. So here's my appraisal. It's at fifty. And and that's exactly because the bank wanted to turn down my my financing application, saying that I was way overpaying, and they just wanted to lend thirty thousand on let's say an eighty or ninety thousand dollar property. So. Just beware on that side. So that's the number one warning. The second thing is that a vendor that wants to close quickly is putting you in a bind, is putting you in a bind to shorten your due diligence time. Okay, um, that I don't like uh, to start with. And now, do you have uh, have you put a deposit on that property yet? I've got um, I've got a small deposit with the. Uh with the escrow company. And how much did you put down? 40,000. Well, that's a, that's a decent deposit. That's that's a decent deposit. So you've got a deposit on it. Now, what happens if it takes you longer than the 30 days to do your due diligence? 
Well, the the, the, um, the price offer that I gave them uh, had indicated in there that if we went beyond that uh, time frame, that it was negotiable to extend it. Okay. So, in 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 any case, and that's for everybody here. Whenever you do, when you make an offer to purchase and there's due diligence that is very tight, what you want to make sure is that if the vendor does not supply you with the information that you require, within so many days of you asking for it, okay, any, uh, any dates will be postponed accordingly. Because what happens sometimes is that, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying this for, for your example here, I'm, I'm saying this for, uh, for, for the, the other people that are listening, is that if you offer 2.2 and then the vendor gets an offer at 2.3, which is 100000 or more than what you've got there, he may have, he may be inclined not to give you the information that you need so that you come to the end of your due diligence and you pull out because the vendor already has somebody else lined up for the property. So what you would do in that case is you write a clause like this, um, subject to due diligence at the sole and absolute discretion of the purchaser. So we all understand that. The purchaser has a right to request any information as he may deem necessary. So that means that anything that you need necessary, anything that you need to do your due diligence, um, you could ask for it. And the vendor agrees to supply such information within five days of request. So that means that on the 20th day of your due diligence, if you say, now I want to have copies of the deposit books, because I can't really match my deposit with what you told me, he's got five days to do it. And if he doesn't do it in his five days, any dates will be postponed accordingly. So that means that if it takes him 15 days, your closing date goes past 15 days. Right. Does that make any sense? So yes, what, what you want to make sure is that you, you never get squeezed on a closing date where the vendor may not give you all of the information because I'm not sure, but you've already started occurring expenses. Do we agree? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, you might have occurred, you no, know, two or three thousand bucks from appraisal. You went there, you flights, whatever, whatever. And then there might be a mortgage commitment fee. Uh, you know, there might be an inspection. There might, you know, like there's a few things that you're going to occur in the next two or three weeks. And yep. if you don't close because the vendor is not supplying you the necessary information, you're cooked. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, as a, so, what what I like to do is I like to stack my clauses that are conditional one upon the one upon the other, meaning that uh, subject to due diligence 30 days, subject to inspection 15 days after due diligence, subject to financing 10 days after inspection, subject to partner's review 10 days after inspection. So what I'm doing is I'm stacking my clauses in order for me to, if, if I'm not getting the right answer, I don't go further. And yeah. what I want to do is I want to do everything that I can that is costing me nothing in my first initial due diligence phase. And that is all the financial information. I don't want to hire an inspector. I don't want to get a mortgage commitment. I don't want to get a mortgage broker until I've reviewed all of my income and expense. Do we agree? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Yep. Um, so I said, um, so my challenge was uh, quick closing date, inspection, inspection. Of that. So what else was there in that I mentioned that uh, you should watch and look for? Um, now, have you received your rent rolls and all that? Yes, I have. Now, what did you verify in those rent rolls? Um, just, well, there was every... Um, Every unit that was rented, I got the the contract and uh, and stipulation as to you know when they moved in and uh, um, all of the information on their profile, I guess you'd call it, for all 65 okay. units. So you've got it like a spreadsheet style, cut tenant moved in on 
October 1st, 2013, he's paying 600 in rent. There's a security deposit. Yep. Uh, did you get a copy of the lease? I've got, I've got the, a copy of every one of the leases, yes. Okay. Did you get confirmation that these were real leases? Um, no. Did you get confirmation that this money has actually been deposited? Well, we've got the um, we've got the last three years of financials that um, that they're okay. So let me ask you a question. So so yeah. now again, I, I'm I'm making sure that you're not buying this, okay? So yeah. if I am an owner of a building and I want to sell the building, and I'm saying there's a tenant in Suite 101 for six hundred dollars, and actually that apartment is vacant, can I take six hundred dollars of my own cash and deposit it into the uh, the bank and say this is apartment 101. Right. And could my financial statement reflect that there has been income for apartment 101? And at year end, the owner paid himself that $600 in rental income for that unit that he advanced. Could that happen? I would imagine. So what I want you to understand this in your due diligence is that do not believe anyone. There's so many ways to rip off documents and an investor in due diligence that if the guy says, yeah, I was collecting, you know, in October I collected uh, $600 from Suite 103, perfect, thank you. Could you supply me a copy of the release? Perfect, thank you. Could you supply me a copy of the deposit book? Perfect, thank you. Now I'd like to get a letter from the tenants stating that he's been there since October 1st and paying $600. Then you'll be able to confirm the income. And what happens is that when you start asking those questions, like, you know, there's a saying in, the, uh, I don't know if you have it in, in English, but the, the, the rabbit comes out of the hat. Is that the thing or something like that? <laughs> you know, because what's happening is that when you, when you ask those questions, the vendor starts to feel that he's on trial and all the little things that he's put around and in, in, on the income side are all going to come to tuition, are all going to come out. And the way to squeeze him out of this is that you could have the vendor and the, the clause that you would put in your contract is the vendor warrants the rents to be X number of dollars for October, X number of dollars for December, and so on. And and then then it's even going to come out even worse. You just say, I'm not guaranteeing that that was the rent. Well, why not? You told me that the rent has been paid. You shouldn't have a problem for it. You see what I mean? That makes sense? Okay. Okay, so I've given you a few hints. And, and by the way, the most important thing to look up in your... Um, when you're doing due diligence, you always start by income. I don't care about the expense to start with. Because if the income is not there, the property is not worth the value. What I mean by this is that if the vendor says the income on this building is, uh, let's see here, $2.4 million, you're probably paying, uh, the income should be about twenty-five. Yeah, it should be about twenty-five to thirty thousand a month. Am I correct? No, 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 building managers themselves, so they haven't been paying for, uh, you know, property manager. They're not paying for property managers? No. They're doing themselves. Okay, so here's another problem that you've got there. So first of all, uh, I saw the building because I saw it on your property. Um, these are townhouses. How old are these townhouses? They're not too old. I think they're about 15 years. The complex is, uh, was built in, in the mid-70s, but they put all new windows and new roofs on it. Uh, two years ago. Okay, so so townhouses or, or buildings like what I saw, and I, I do this by memory, I saw your posting about two or three weeks ago. Um, you should expect to have at least 
35, 35 to 40 to 45 percent worth of the gross in expenses. That's what you should expect on a building like that. So that means that it, it's it's not only this month expense is going to be 35 percent. That means that over a period of a year, two years, or three years, something will happen that it will average out to be 40, 45 percent. Uh, and when you say you got 30 and a few thousand and the, the NOI is 20, what did you say, 20? 24,000. So that means that they only have $5,000 worth of expense? Well, the, the uh, gross income is, I think it, I'm, I'm going by memory now too, but it's about 33500 or something like that uh, per month and the net income is 24000 Okay, so th they have nine thousand dollars worth of expense on thirty-four. So that means that it's like thirty uh, percent. Uh, it's about thirty percent. Um, you're low on expenses. Now, let me ask you something. You live in Calgary, I think. Am I correct? Saskatoon. Saskatoon. Sorry, my, my apologies. So you live in Saskatoon. Do you think that you're going to need a property management company to do uh, the work there, or are you oh, going to do sure. it yourself? No. Oh, okay. So. No, I'll so so they did not have one, so you need to add, to add now 8% property management. Do yeah. you think that because you now live in, in Saskatoon, that you're not going to get trades that are going to charge you more uh, than the norm in repairs and maintenance, so that your repairs and maintenance are going to be higher than before? So, so what's, what's happening right now is that because they're doing all these things, their NOI makes sense. But when you're going to own it, your, on, your NOI is going to take a, a dive like crazy, and you're going to be in the 45 to 48 percent expenses. And if you're in 45 to 48 percent expenses, I would bet that that property will not cash flow. So again, I'm trying to make sure that you're not buying it. And you've got to make all your homework based on do your math on 45 percent expenses. Because what happens is that the building is already 40 years old. When was the last time there was a roof made put on it? And in the next two, three, four, five years, you're going to have a roof to put back on that property, and you're going to have ask you're going to have to average out that cost over the period of time that you've had it, and then suddenly you're in the 45% expenses. I don't know if there's boilers. I don't know if there's pools. I don't know if there's a uh, uh, you know, playground. And these are all the expenses that I don't know about or I haven't seen the property. But you could bet that that building, on average, will have 40 to 45 percent worth of expenses. All of, the, um, all of the roofs on every building were replaced in 2012. So when we look back at the expenses of 2012, uh, okay, cool. they're, they're pretty high um, because all of the windows and new roofs were put on in, in 2012. Okay, so so let me ask you a question. Did you get a copy of the um, the roofing contract to confirm that they were that the job was done? No, no, I did not. You should ask for that. Uh, you should ask if there's a warranty on the roof. You should ask for a copy of the windows, the 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 copy of the the windows invoice, because you haven't seen the property. So these are things that you could do ahead of time, without seeing it. So you say, okay. Uh, uh, roofs have been done, windows have been done. What about appliances? What's the age of the appliances? Mm -hmm. nope. I'm writing feverishly here, Mark. Pardon me? I said I'm writing uh, notes okay, here. Okay, no problem. No problem. So, so <laughs> uh, I hope you don't, uh, Yarek. I hope you don't mind if I. If I play the devil's advocate, because that's my job here. Mark, job this is the sure. this is the best VIP presentations I ever heard for a long time. <laughs> well, I, I'm making notes time, too. <laughs> okay, well, well, what happens, Yarek, is that listen, I've I did so many due diligence on buildings where, listen, the, the, uh, here's another example. Um, okay, have you pulled out the tax? Uh, the tax assessment. Did you get that? I haven't uh, gone to the city and pulled out the tax assessment. Okay. Anymore. So you should ask the vendor for the tax assessment. Now, just make sure that 
the tax bill that you're going to get is for the actual property that you're buying. Okay. Okay. I did a deal. Uh, my wife, my my wife bought, made an offer on a property in Windsor on a, I think a thirty and a few unit building. Okay. And she comes to me with all the papers, blah blah blah, and she's all excited. Mark, we got a great deal. My first big deal. Blah blah blah. And. I'm looking at, and she says, look, the tax is $17,000, and here's the bill, $17,111, okay? I remember that vividly. And so I'm looking at the tax bill, says, did you check if it's on the right property? Because I've also seen vendors giving you a tax bill for a different property than the one you're buying because the taxes were lower. Okay, so that's another thing that you got to look for. Make sure that your the information that you're getting is on the right property. Now, the second thing is that that vendor actually gave me the 19, let me see here, 1997 bill instead of the 2007 bill. Okay, so for me, when I looked at it, 17,000 or whatever the year, I mean, there was a 10 year difference there, but whatever the year was, is that the taxes were not 17,000 anymore. They were 38,000. Okay? So when you're doing your due diligence, you cannot believe your job is to doubt everything that is received by the vendor. So if the guy says, "Well, you know, I'm renting those suites for $600 a month." There's a point where you could say, ask him, says, could you give me a copy of the advertisement that you were putting in those months? Because is there a chance that the guy, in order to rent his suites for $600 a month, was giving away a free TV or a microwave or a whatever, whatever, whatever? Okay? So due diligence is, and 64 unit, there's a lot of ways to, to, um, to make numbers look well. On a duplex, well, it's not too hard. There's only two tenants. I need two confirmation of income from the tenant, and that's it. Yeah. You know, uh, When I have a promotion on a, on a duplex, it's easy. It's, you know, you put an ad in the local newspaper. But when I used to buy ads for my buildings in Edmonton, you know, I'd have an ad every month for the same, and then I'd say, free TV, free this, free this if you sign the lease. And what that did is that it actually increased my rental income but as soon as my tenant moved out, uh, I was back at the old rate, and then my income would go down on my buildings. So just just have a quick, you know, don't trust anything. Uh, and on 64 units, your due diligence is, as far as I know, is too short. So don't spend any money without being sure that you're going to get an extension. Because by the time the U.S. banks pull the money out, they do title search. They do, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, you're going to be past the 30 days. Okay. I will be, uh, if the appraisal comes in properly with this thing tomorrow, um, I will be going down there to, uh, to spend the next week um, specifically right there with them and with uh, an inspector if possible. Yeah, you have to uh, bring a camera, uh, yep. take all the um, serial serial number of the appliances or photos of, of all your appliances, um, uh, all the repairs that have been done, uh, you, could, you could actually ask for that before you go out there. Any repairs above three or five thousand dollars, you want copies of the bills so that you could see that these repairs were actually done uh, and who did them. Um, uh, what else? Uh, inspector. Um, uh, try to get copies of the leasing uh, magazines around there, you know, like Home Renter's Guide, those kind of things, so you know if they're at market value, those properties, compared to other buildings. Are there any laundry services and uh, you know laundromats on the building? 
the tenants or the um, the owner? No, the appliances are owned by the owner other than washers and dryers. If anybody has any, they're owned by the tenants. Okay. Uh, is there any sheds or, or anything like that in the building? Is that a place where there was a pool there also? No, there's no pool there. There's no there's, pool? There's, um, a there's a playground, but there's no pool. And, uh, no pool there. Uh, parking, is it, how recent is the parking area? The parking area supposedly has been completely re uh, asphalted and new lines built on, um, marked on it, I should say, within the last couple of years. Okay. And is there any, um, you know, plug-ins for car plug-ins in that? Uh, where is, it's in North Carolina or South Carolina? North Carolina. Okay. There's, there's probably no plug-ins right out there, right? I don't know for sure. That's a question I never asked. All of the okay. units are... Uh, there's no centralized heating system whatsoever, so all of the units are, um, each one of the tenants is responsible for their own electricity and that kind of thing. Okay, so now my next question is, is there a meter per suite? Yep. Is there a meter for common area? Yes, there is. Are you sure? Well, um, there's an electrical bill. They've put an all-new... Uh, um, lighting in, in the parking lot and in the foyer, uh, you know, the entrance to the buildings and that kind of stuff. So that. Okay, so one of the things that you've got to check there is that on most building, a few years ago, and this is like we're talking a few years, and we're talking now 20, 20, 20 years ago, the electrical, the electrician, when they used to wire an apartment, they'd wire the apartment to a meter, but now who was paying for the common area? Um, electrical. So what they did is they actually had one panel that was a hundred amp and the other three, let's say it's a, it's a fourplex, the other three were six, 60 amps and what happened is that the tenant that lived in the apartment that had the hundred amp panel was actually paying for the power of the whole building. <laughs> okay, because technically if you really are, if the electrician does a good job and it's a fourplex, there should be five meters. Okay? So check that out. Derek, what do you think of that? Uh, I'm so glad I'm recording that. <laughs> <laughs> So Gary, just in the future, we will decode it and make available for you in the within 24 hours if you're interested. Okay, that would be nice. That's for sure. You gonna transcribe it, uh, Yarek, or what? Uh, no, just record it. If you if it has to be oh, transcribed, you gonna decode it? Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let me think. Uh, what else do we um, should we watch here? Um, So comparative rents, we're going to check that out with uh, local magazines. Um, what I should do, what I should do, uh, Mark, is I'll, I should send you the uh, the initial package that I got because it, it had all of the rent uh, rental meter uh, figures and all that kind of stuff right in with with that package. Um, I'd love to do this, uh, but really. Uh, um, I don't really have the time to analyze okay. the deal. I'm trying to, um, you know, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you as, as much. But if you want, I'll have a quick look at it, and I might pinpoint a few things to help you out. Uh, this, by the way, is a perfect example for a uh, an evening training event. Uh, Yarek, do you agree on uh, due diligence? Definitely. And, and have that as a keynote um, uh, keynote event on one of our new events that we're going to have. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, let me think here. So, um, on the rent side, on the expense side, we talked about the parking, we talked about invoices, uh, appliances, uh, utilities, um, uh, air conditioning. There's no AC on those properties, probably? There's uh, just, just the room air conditioners, I guess, that are okay. uh, you know, electrical. Yeah, they're okay. Uh, so, there, there might be some machines uh, on, the, on the windows, that's what you're saying there. Yeah. Um, Get copies of the power bill of your of the tenants just to give you an idea what 
you know, if, if time comes stuff and you have to pay the utilities for these units, what would it cost you? So mm -hmm. although the tenants are paying for their own utilities, what will it cost you? And at the same time, if these, if these units are vacant, uh, don't forget you have to absorb uh, the utility bill. And are there any deposits uh, given to utilities company out, out there? Something you should watch for. Okay. Um, on the land itself, is there any uh, rights of ways? Have you got a survey of the land? Okay, I don't know that. Okay, is there anything else that you could put on that piece of land that would increase its value? I.e., could you put a cell phone tower? Could you put some advertising? Could there be some billboards? Uh, are there any rental laws that tenants must uh, follow in order to live there? Uh, I hear they're allowed to park any kind of vehicle. Um, uh, are there rules for uh, noise at night? Um, could you evict on drug, uh, whatever? So try to find out if there's some internal rules in that building. Uh, it's not something that's going to break your deal, but it's something that's good to know so that when you take over, you know where to go with your tenants. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously you have to learn something about the uh, North Carolina. Um, Landlord and Tenant Act, yeah. Landlord and Tenant Act, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else that you might have questions on? I don't think so. I've, I've, uh, you've covered an awful lot of information here that is extremely good. Um, you. Some of the stuff I've, I've looked into and other things I haven't even remotely thought about. <laughs> so, no That's 25 yeah. years of experience, 30 years of experience. Mm -hmm. So Gary, that financing, uh, how did you get it? Just out of curiosity. Yeah. Um, well, the first um, financing is is kind of like a bridge financing, and uh, we have worked with I think three different uh, groups that do financing uh, on longer term, and they're not banks in the U.S. They're they're longer term financing, starting at about four four and a half percent. Um, so I've got two of those that are committed to. Uh, doing this on a, on a longer term financing once we get possession of the building. So the financier, believe it or not, on this particular one is, um, is financing 80% of, of the uh, broker professional opinion, so the BPO, 22750000 So if you multiply that out, they are uh, supplying absolutely everyone. Yeah, almost, uh, almost the full financing on the 2.2 million offer. Okay, so now what's your next of finding that money? Oh, sorry. No problem. So what is your, are you back? Yeah. Sorry about that. So what is the broker charging you to find that financing? Uh, 10 percent. The interest rate on it is 10 percent and uh, two points. And they're charging you two points of yep. 2.2 million. So that's yep. not bad, two points. Um, what's the, is it a, um, uh, what term, 25 or 10-year um, term or what's, what's the term? Well, this is, this is just the bridge financing uh, portion of it. So um, once I get, uh, get you know, if, if it goes through completely, then I'm going to um, be refinancing that because this this is short term short term financing at 10 percent. That's that's too high for me. So, yeah, are you uh, cash flowing at 10 percent? Yes. You are. How much are you ca are you cash flowing good or not? Um, well, not extremely good. Probably about uh, four thousand a month or thereabouts. Not not nearly what uh, what I need to be for sure. 
Okay, but don't forget, eh? The cost of money is not as important as the availability. Right. So you've got a loan here at 10% uh, that is still giving you $4,000 positive cash flow, and technically you haven't put a penny down, or you've put 40000 or 50000 so that yeah. means that you've got a 90% cash on cash return uh, on something that you didn't put a penny down. So, right. you know, I look at, uh, I don't care what my money is costing me, as long as I don't have, I have the least amount in, and that seems to be the case. Now, when do they want to be repaid, that guy? When does that bridge want to be repaid? Um, there's there's an open uh, one-year term on it right at the moment. That's, okay, that's so the, now it's open to be repaid at any time, or it has to be repaid in one year? Uh, it's open to be repaid at any time without any penalty. Now, does it have to be repaid in one year? Um, well, I'm, I don't know that for sure at this point. We, I haven't gone into the financing portion of it yet because we're okay. still in so the Okay, so let me give you a few pointers here. Um, yeah. Bridge financing is normally to be repaid within 6, 12, or 18 months. Right. And if you don't repay it, or if you come up once and you can't find interim financing, what's the renewal terms and conditions if it happens? Right. Because what could happen there is that you go one year, you try to refinance, you're not getting your refinance, and then the guy that's at 10% says, you know what, I now want 18%. Yeah. I now want 20%, and it's not two points that I want. I want six points to sign up. And the mortgage broker that there says, well, you know what? I want my cut, too, because you're actually renewing that mortgage. So now you have to repay another broker's fee, another finder's fee, another interest fee. So here's three things that you need to make sure when you accept a, a bridge financing. First of all, you want to have an option to renew, a guaranteed option to renew. So if the guy says it's one year, after one year, if you haven't been able to refinance it, you want to have an option to renew for the, for the same term as what you had before. Okay. Number two things, you want to make sure that you know what the interest will be at renewal. Number three, you want to make sure that you know if there will be fees at renewal. And number four, will the mortgage broker charge you a fee at renewal? Okay. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So you have to renew. You want to know the interest, you want to confirm the terms, you want to know if he's charging you a renewal fee, and if the broker is charging you a renewal fee. Mm -hmm. Key to your refinance. Because, you know, I've seen, I've seen a student of mine taking a six month on a flip, saying, you know, I don't mind, it's only six months. And at the end of the six month, was not able to refinance. The guy went 12%, 24% from two points to eight points and the mortgage broker charged him five points and the guy was positive cash flow and overnight he went to a, well, I don't know how much, but he lost the building. Okay. All right. Maybe you've convinced me I shouldn't buy this. No, 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 no. <laughs> what I'm doing here is I'm giving you, I'm, I'm showing you things that you need to know and by good. knowing this you're going to be so good that you're going to say mark i got all the answers <laughs> and that's what i'm doing here i'm not trying to convince you not to buy i'm trying to show you that yep. if i wanted to sell you that property and and, and you, know, you understand what i mean is that i'm convincing you not to buy but i'm i'm, I'm putting you this is what new investors don't know <laughs> sorry <Yep. laughs> okay any, uh, so anything else that I could try? So did I help you here tonight? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think. I think that's probably uh, enough fodder to keep me uh, uh, keep going, me for, going for quite a while. Yeah, good, 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 good. Derek, you got any questions on what I've said so far tonight? Uh, definitely. I would like to just mention Gary is responsible for Canada REIC operation in Saskatoon. And, uh, oh. 
we can reveal the information that we are planning to be in Saskatoon in June, Gary. Yes. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Gary, okay. what, we're, what Canada REIC is doing is that uh, I am actually partnering with Yarek into building Canada REIC as a training club, not just a real estate social club, but uh, as a club that will have uh, across Canada uh, regular monthly trainings, keynote presentation that I will be giving and, and I'll find some new speakers that will come in and, and train on specific things. Uh, and the idea is that the membership structure will change for sure, but at the same time, the idea is that we want to train you guys. And um, uh, there's no club there that actually has a very strong training platform. And my background uh, with Rich Dad and my real estate background, uh, I think we could bring the, uh, the level of training to REIC to much higher and, and get it going that way. Awesome. That's Good. excellent. Awesome. So, anything else, Eric? Gary and June. Uh, honestly, uh, we have a couple questions for for multiple units investing, and I have decided honestly, we will finish this VIP presentation because I will set it up as a special uh, video how to analyze and how to make due diligence on the multiple unit apartment building. So I do not want to mix it. Uh, that was perfect, and I did. I, I liked a lot. Honestly, uh, I'm making so many notes, right? <laughs> Something to all you'll always learn, and that's why is the beauty of being, you know, involved in such kind of organization when you can learn without, you know, contributing so much of, of your time, right? So, anyway, Gary, you are muted. I'm going to mute you. And uh, is there any other questions, guys? We will stop it at this moment, and we will have a, a, uh, another VAP workshop in near future. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, for amazing, amazing workshop. I did. I, I truly believe that this is the best one so far for seven years, and uh, related to point to point. So. Uh, I'm making notes well, and I'm tr going through them and I'm going not Eric, to sleep today. <laughs> well, Eric, I I'm very happy. Like you know, I wish there was more people on those on those um, those events because uh, I'm not bragging. I know my stuff because I've done it. Mm -hmm. And and I think I think our in our 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 database of investors they have to know that stuff because I mean. You know, you could lose you could lose thirty thousand dollar because you forgot one thing in due diligence. Definitely. Uh, simple, simple, simple. Uh, you know, not structuring the right company structure, um, not hiring the right property management company. Uh, you know, allowing them to deposit the money uh, in their account, their account, and then paying you. I mean, there, there's so much I could talk to you guys about property management, you know, I'm just saying. So um, I think it's a great idea that we're, we're keeping it at, at one hour tonight. And, um, uh, you know, let's make sure that the um, our, our database of investors know that we're planning what we're doing. And, um, and then we'll go from there. Definitely. We will market very well that presentation. Uh, I have already a couple ideas, so... Oh, cool. So you're going to send that out to uh, some of your, your database saying, listen, this is what we have. Is that what you normally do, Aaron? Uh, what I'm planning to do with this, uh, this is not for the presentation. Uh, we, will, we will include that presentation in our radio, which we launch in tomorrow. Uh, you didn't know about that, right? We start in having a radio show. Oh, cool. And uh, that will be included. And yes, we will make sure that as of one of the samples of what VIP members they can, uh, uh, how ca they can learn and what kind of information is provided. So we will be ut utilizing this presentation as a trailer for, uh, as information for everybody. Okay. Yeah, so that's a great idea because I think um, you know mm -hmm. um, the students that were uh, the, the students, the investors that were on this call here. Uh, I'm sure I hope they have learned something and. Uh, it gives them an idea of the, the caliber of learning that we want to give our, mm -hmm. our, our, our investors in the future at those uh, keynote presentations and, 
And mm -hmm. like, like I said, you know, we want to roll uh, different topics every at every city so that everybody has a chance to get as much as possible of every topic, not not just repeating repeating the same presentation night after night for 30 days, but uh, mm -hmm. being able to do it um, that way. So, good. Pleasure working with you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Everybody have a great, great night. Um, can I do a little plug on my book, Yarek? Of course. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm just asking. Hey guys, um, some of you that are there tonight, um, I wrote a book that's called What Real Estate Gurus Don't Tell You, Why Some Succeed and Others Struggle. Uh, it's on my website. I think, did you put a link on... Um, uh, did you offer any deal on to this, your database, we should, Yarek? We should talk about that. Do you have an electronic version too or not? I have an electronic. Well, yeah, I, have a, I have a hard copy and an electronic. Um, and I had, uh, okay, so um, what I'm willing to do is I'm, uh, my book is sells for $30. Uh, I'm going to give a $10 rebate to anybody that wants either the electronic or the paper copy. Uh, and uh, if you want, Yarek, I'll give them my website. Uh, my website is uh, www, like anybody else, m m o u s s e a u dot com. So it's double m muso dot com. And um, if you guys want to go there, and there is, if you send me an email, there's a uh, there's a ten dollar coupon for you guys available if you want to buy either copy. So a thirty dollars on a hard copy. Uh, and 25 if you want a PDF copy. But that book is going to tell you how to structure yourself uh, and, and all the mistakes that new investors do. Anyway, uh, I'm not there to sell the book. I'm there to help you guys out. So. Uh, yes, and I'm just putting that website on, of yours here on the, on the, on the screen. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, we haven't talked it, but why not to mention on Canada REIC, we have just launched last week. Uh, a private shop where you can offer your books, downloadable books, if you choose so, and you will oh, have okay. information about who bought it, etc. Right? So, okay. My okay. shop. Well, okay. We'll talk about this. Uh, we'll talk about this uh, later in on. the next few days. I mean, there's, uh, you know, I got a no money down blueprint program that mm -hmm. all your investors should look at. I mean, it's it's six precise deals that I've done from. Uh, you know, hundred thousand dollars to two million dollars in real estate. That uh, giving mm -hmm. them exact uh, things on how I did it. So um, that's part of my site. So anyway, I'm on the okay, page well, one thirty one to let you know. You're on page one thirty one of what? <laughs> your book. <laughs> I'm reading your book. Hello. Well, we are, we everybody are... have a great night. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and um, I really enjoyed speaking with you. Yarek and I will be doing um, great stuff this year. You'll have the opportunity to have some training that, uh, where I used to train for five thousand dollars for a weekend. Uh, I will be, we will be offering these trainings for one fifth the cost, one sixth the cost of what I used to do uh, when I was with Rich Dad. The intent that we have is really to. Um, to give you guys a chance to learn, uh, not at five thousand dollars a camp, but at a lot, lot, lot less than that, and it's uh, uh, it's by one of their top trainers, which is what I used to do for a living, basically. Uh, thank you for having me on this um, VIP, uh, and Yarek, I will talk to you uh, in the next day or so. Let me know what your thoughts are. Okay. <laughs>